The lights, the sounds of the city, are a stark contrast to the last few days that Philip Kindred has spent out in the wilderness. Having his first good meal in a good while, he's ready to head back out there again to try and work up a bit of funds as he tries to unravel the mystery of just who he is. Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Neo Scavenger, where Philip is going to start sweating, apparently, because it's rather warm around here. But for the next few days, he is going to be focusing on trying to gather food, boil up water, and sell it at the junk mart. Not the most luxurious lifestyle, but one that should be able to net him enough credits to eventually get his eyes fixed. And in that time, we are going to be visiting the junk market each day to see what they have on offer. As I believe that does change over time, we've already seen some different things while we've been here. So while all of this is here now, it might not be that way forever. And you know what? It might not be the smartest idea in the world, but I wouldn't be against us getting rid of our spear for the moment. Because that way, we could carry a lot more bottles and boil a whole lot more water all in one go. But maybe we don't sell the spear. Maybe we just try and stash it away down in our little wood campsite. I am hoping to just find another plastic bag around here somewhere, but maybe that's unlikely. So the first thing that we're going to want to try and contend with while we're gathering water is our hunger. And the way that we're going to try and do that is by using our snare down here. And so I believe the way that that is going to work is by scavenging the stretch of woods while using our snare. So we're actually going to have to go and grab that just out of this inventory and put it into our own momentarily. So we can see that it's pretty safe here. We're pretty secluded. We're going to be using our strength and also <laughs> the squirrel snare. Man, the chances of us finding a squirrel here, very, very, very low. If we use a light source, it does give us a little bit more of a chance. No useful items found this time. And I think each time that we do that, the snare is going to go down in condition a little bit. I think we should be able to get a little bit of water boiled up before we have to worry about anything else. So with the little bit of moves we've got left, we're going to try and do that. But I think I would also like to try and stop sweating if possible. So let's just leave that there for now and let's just hold on to our coat because I think that's probably making us quite warm. And so now yet again, we have all sterilized water. And we're going to start to make our way over towards the junk mart. We're going to put this back on for a moment and we're going to take the snare with us because I wouldn't mind stopping by the forest here. I do think that there's probably a very strong chance that we're not going to find anything. I feel like all of the forests here have probably been heavily, heavily picked over, which is why the loot is just so dramatically low. So yeah, I don't think it's worth it. We might just have to try and find other food options, but for now, we're just going to be selling off that water and trying to generate as many credits as we can, getting towards that 1,000 that we need. And you know what? This cardboard box, it barely costs anything. If we can carry that in our hand, I'm fine with us selling the snare for now. Yeah, we can. That's going to allow us to carry way more water. And we could pay for some bottles here, but I think that we're going to be able to find some just fine. And back to work for now. Oh, and it does seem like we have actually exhausted the water here from the marsh so we'll need to head down to another water source we do have one here it's rather close to this bad looking swamp though and hello stranger looks like someone's unconscious there we might want to check them out in just a moment oh yeah no we can see them uh getting the crap beat out of them and i think i was actually just making a mistake up here i was trying to take the water uh when we need to use it <laughs> and just like that we are fully stacked up on our water so we could head on over here, just say hello. We're gonna offer a ceasefire. Okay, let's see what's on the ground here. Okay, <laughs> oh boy, um, yeah, wow, okay, okay. So first of all, gas mask with cartridges. Um, okay, so we probably we can obviously wear this on our face. What I would want to do is try and take out the cartridges because you wouldn't want to be using them specifically. This one doesn't have any, oh, it's spent, okay. 
but we could still we can still sell it. Sure, we'll, we'll pick that up for now. We'll put the gas mask on because I feel like that's going to be a little bit of extra protection, and we'll just keep this uh, extra cartridge blue frog sash. Hmm, and it looks like you had some mushrooms in here as well, which don't know if they're edible, so we're probably not going to worry about that for now. We are going to take this sleeping bag though, and thankfully this is a sleeping bag that folds up really nice. Oh, and you had some other things in your cargo pants here as well. Potato chip bag, broken bottle, and another spent cartridge. Money's money, we'll take it. And then of course there is the bow that's here. Now I do wonder if we are going to be able to like sling the bow over our shoulder. I'm looking at both of our shoulders and we don't seem to be able to do that. I do wonder if we could make a strap or something like that for it. But a bow, that's a very good tool. And that would be rather difficult to just pass up. Oh, we've even got some extra things in here as well. Which you know, we'll just go and drink the, uh, the cola drink. Because it's going to slake our thirst, it's going to give us some hunger, but I think that is all going to crash down after the caffeine high, you know, leaves us. So we'll empty out the water, it is sterilized in there, we'll drink some of that ourselves, and I want to take these bottles. Now the other thing that we had there was a digital water tester, yet again another thing that we can look at selling. The bow though, I really, I really want it. But right now, I don't know if I can justify us giving up the extra space. Because right now, we're trying to generate funds. If anything, I think it might be worth us just trying to take it to the market and sell it. And we just leave this bag here for now. I think that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, let's start making a move as quick as we can. Hopefully, everything's still gonna be there when we get back. Oh, we've got someone else down here, a looter. Well, maybe they'll get lucky. Let's hope not. All right, back at the market, we are going to be trading off the bow. So long. But that is a fair amount of creds. Okay, we're just down to one move a turn at the moment, and that's because of um, how late it is. So, we don't want to be at this for too long. But it does look like our things are still here. That's good. I do not like how hungry we are. So I'd love to be able to do something about that. It doesn't seem like crafting slows us down, like we still get a fair amount of moves, so that's decent. And all of our water has been sterilized, good. But yeah, malnourished. That ain't good. So we are going to start that journey back on over towards town. Thankfully when we get here it looks like the moves increase and that's because of eyesight. Oh boy, well the market has restocked and that's a greenwood bow and there's a freaking hunting rifle. A very good looking hunting rifle and a laptop too. That's unfortunately quite an expensive piece of meat. Oh yes, and the scraps of paper that we had been holding on to. I believe we can separate them out and we can read them individually. Whether or not it would let us do that here? Oh, we can. Well then, let's just separate these pieces of paper here and we'll see if there's any interesting recipes that we can kind of pick out from this sterilized water pill okay making a strapped gauss rifle <laughs> so nothing new for us there oh but we do have an old newspaper that we can read lights out battle creek residents claim they are being made prisoner in their own homes because of city council's controversial street light switch off the budget reducing plan led to criminal gangs running larger and larger percentages of infrastructure in the beleaguered city well, well. Okay, let's um, let's get selling. And of course, I'm always gonna leave one bottle for us. But we're, you know, we're getting there fund-wise, and we are seeing more equipment pop up day by day. So there might end up being something that takes our fancy that we want to go for. Yeah. Whew. Well, I think at the very least we are going to want to eat something. So I think we'll probably try and see if we can pop into the city, maybe have shrimp again. It is gonna be twenty bucks for us to do it but i still feel like that's okay in terms of you know value there was also the congo jungle apartments where we have the canteen truck 48 though i wonder how much that would help us nah let's head back to the gnome pushing through the front door that familiar smell hits us and i think we're probably going to go back to the jumbo fried shrimp really because it's good and that does help us out a, a bit. 
but we still need more. I think it's still on the way up, so we'll pay the bill yet again, and we'll even pay the tip as well, just because, you know, I feel like they're probably pretty hard done by in the city. And with that, we'll be heading back outside and heading to our campsite for the night. Oh boy, oh, you know, maybe not. <laughs> it's morning, we've been up all night, and I think that's okay. That's something that we're just gonna have to get used to. I think I probably will try and pick up some bottles, just because that's gonna be more efficient, a little bit of cost up front, but we'll get more in the long term. And maxed out as we are, Philip, let's go and do some boiling. Oh boy, okay. <laughs> well, um, yeah, in field horror. It's just tackled us to the ground. An unknown assailant leaps onto the player. Yeah, what the hell is that? We're gonna have to wait for a turn here. Okay, the infield horror is dodging out of the way, making them harder to hit for the moment. Uh, yeah. We're at range three at the moment. We're gonna roll dodge away. Okay, we got away from it. What the hell was that? What was that? Did that come out of the swamp? <laughs> Don't know if I like that. Okay then, do I really want to stay here and craft? Is that something that I want to do? Not really. Maybe heading over here might be safer for us now. I mean, a forest is a forest, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll do that and I think we're still being followed here. So we're just going to do a blind retreat. Oh, cool. It's a stranger. That That's okay. Now, I suppose if the stranger does take anything out or they're taken out by something, we can maybe do some scavenging. But for now, we, we're going to have to wait here and try and make another fire. And that's all of our water sterilized. No doubt we're going to get quite tired throughout today, but I think that'll actually help us sleep easier. What I don't want to be is weak with hunger, though. Yeah, you know what I think we're going to do? We're going to buy some of these corner cola drinks because, well, we're going to get a caffeine high. It's going to help us stay up for longer. And then it's going to allow us to carry more water. I think we'll probably have a look at getting some food inside the city first of all. And I still feel like the 20 is the cheapest option for us. Well, I mean, it's it's 24 if we're going to be tipping. So, <laughs> jumbo shrimp it is. And then let's get back to the boil. <laughs> That's a fair more water we've got now. We've got all of our water and of course once we start to get a little bit hungrier, we will be drinking the corner cola as we go. In so doing, giving us more crafting capability. Let's just stoke that fire and then get to boiling. Well, that's all of our water boiled and we're already hungry. So we're going to start to knock back some of that. Really, we should probably split that up a little bit more. It doesn't seem to be too much calorie intake on the second drink. It does help us not be as tired for a little while, I suppose. And now we're at 550. And so pretty much at this stage, we're going to rinse and repeat as much as we can. Oh, and just jumping back quickly, we can see the mushrooms that are here. They're death cap mushrooms. They're poisonous. And I think they're the same mushrooms that that guy was carrying. <laughs> We've reached the evening. We're at $700 credits. And we're going to be trying to have a sleep. I, I hope it's going to be okay sleeping out here. The quality of sleep is meant to be good here. Let's hope. And okay, we wake up in the morning feeling well rested, ready and rearing to continue. So another day at the market here, we've got a nano robotic medical kit here. How cool. Some cheap memory sticks. We have another newspaper, which is just an advertisement. Oh yes, and while we are here, we are going to trade these spent cartridges and this digital water tester too. Well, we have already reached our goal of a thousand dollars. So let's head back in through those gates and towards the health clinic and upstairs to the augmentation procedure place. And we can see, yep, eye surgery is gonna cost us a thousand. It would be great to be able to get the artificial eyes, but that's still a ways off. That would be many, many, many days of collecting water. And who knows what could happen in that time. So I think for now, getting our eyesight better is gonna be worth it. The patient will be screened for eligibility in laser assisted correction or implantation of columnar lenses. If eligible, the patient's myopia will be corrected and better than normal vision will be achieved for a thousand. Let's order the eye surgery. 
After screening you for existing factors and eligibility, your vision is assessed by a computer and you're guided to an operating room. The procedure is quick and done under local anesthesia. Within an hour, you are back on your feet. You're told that you may experience some dryness in your eyes or mild pain, but the healing period is only a remarkable one to two days. Finished, you make your way out to the attendant to retrieve your belongings. Not bloody bad. And I think we're going to celebrate by going and having some shrimp. <laughs> yeah, look at us, heading to the gnome, being able to see better. Philip, what a day. Yeah, and we've actually got enough to leave a tip as well, so we'll do just that. Paying the bill and leaving a tip, leaving us with just under four dollars. So for the sake of us actually having a bit of funds, I think we probably want to do one more run of collecting water before we head on out into the world to continue our scavenging endeavors. And also, depending on the day, we may want to wait for longer. We've got a stranger here. Hmm, we'll keep our eye on you. And whenever we run into these guards, we just have to offer them a ceasefire and we can carry on just fine. And that's given us a hundred, so we were getting about a hundred for each run with the amount of bottles that we've got. Now I think what we'll probably try and do is stash most of these bottles and see if that kind of works for us. You know, just stash them in the forest here. We might still have them when we get back. We'll just try and see if we can pass by this bloke and it's fine. If we do leave them here, I think there's probably a chance that he'll still take them, but you know, that's a risk I'm willing to take. And of course, we are not going to want to keep the plastic bag forever. So we're going to fold that up and swap things around like this so that we can maybe carve a spear for ourselves. Or, you know what, we might even be able to find our old spear. I mean, we've got a fire here. We can make a fire hardened one easily enough. Yeah, there we go. Fire hardened spear. And you know what, because we've got the space, we're probably just going to keep the bottles for now. And I did just learn, hey, we can double click to <laughs> select things a little faster. And I really want to give us the best chance possible once we actually head back out there into the world. So we're going to go and have our favorite meal. And then we might even try and sleep in the parkade tonight, just for a point of difference. So back to the gnome we go to have our favorite meal. And we're feeling pretty happy after that. So we'll be heading back outside for now and over towards the parkade. Now this definitely isn't our last time here at the mega city. We will most certainly be back, but we do have some scavenging to do in and around here. So what are we gonna go for here? I think we're gonna go for a pickup. We do have a sleeping bag, so it should be all right. When you find your stall, there's a maroon pickup truck in it. The bed's more than big enough to stretch out and maybe for two or three people if you wanted. The cab, on the other hand, is pretty minimal. No sleeping in there, unless you're a fan of a sore neck and back. It'll do for a place to safely stash your stuff though. And the parkade's roof at least stops the rain. A comfortable sleep, eh? Oh yeah, and we can see we have the pickup truck here. Decent shelter, really decent shelter. Alertness still not great, so we'll probably, you know, let's put together one of our little noise traps. We're gonna have to end our turn first. Okay, so sleeping bag here. It's gonna increase the quality of our sleep. And then the noise trap should make it pretty easy for us to hear if anyone's gonna try and sneak up on us. Oh, and the dome light here as well. That's also increasing our alertness, I think. Okay, and it looks like we've probably woken up pretty early. I think we'll just try and see if we can sleep a little longer. And it, we did indeed manage to. Weirdly, there's a gas mask. Oh, that's ours. I was going to say, weirdly, there's a gas mask cartridge on the ground. It's because we had it in the can. Okay, I mean, like, we could be here for so much longer. But we don't need to be. We need to be moving on. But the question is to where exactly? Well, Camp Grayling is very, very far to the north. And we've already explored a fair amount down this way. I think we might want to kind of go up and around a bit. Just to see what we have around us. And obviously the farther away from the city we get, the better the looting is going to be. Oh, but let's check the junk mark one last time before we leave. There's a nice looking rifle. And another newspaper with some advertisements. Oh, let's have a look at the, the different papers that we have here though just to see if there's anything. Arrows, broadhead arrow, does require the range skill, which unfortunately we don't have. So we'll be sticking to melee for now as we make our way through the city. And oh, 
As you step around a muddy tarp shanty on the edge of the sprawl, you stumble across an old fifth wheel with smoke streaming from a stovepipe. People lined up outside taking turns ordering at a window. Okay, you're standing outside the Last Chance Canteen. Originally named for its location on the outskirts of the sprawl, locals often joke that the Last Chance Canteen is in fact a warning to the prospective patrons. Known for serving whatever is available, as well as a few suspect staple dishes, the Last Chance is a venue for those hungry and not too fussy about their food's origin. Still, the old fifth wheel draws lines enough to keep its grills hot, so nobody must have died from their food. Yet. Okay. Bottled water, 20 bucks. Non veg stew, $4. Uh, tenders, um, okay. Mixed veggie bowl with protein crispies. I mean, this stuff is cheap. Um, I don't know what the protein is. The non veg stew, uh, it's, uh, but it's cheap. This is all really cheap food. I think we might just go for the mixed veggie bowl. Yeah. That's going to help both hunger and first. Uh, yeah, okay. Being the safest dish on the menu, it's arguably the most popular. Not for a lack of trying, though. A mix of sprouts and shredded carrots, lettuce, and turnips fried in oil. If it had flavor, you'd describe it as a savory with a sweet yet pungent aftertaste. If it had a flavor. I mean, for the amount it costs, that's not bad. Yeah, we'll take that. And then... Of course, yeah, we can enter the canteen here as well. Good to know it's there. I guess I probably should have checked all of the squares around here. You know what? We're going to do that before we end up leaving this place. We'll just top up our string here and then check these last two squares. There we go. We're on the edge of the city now. So at this point, with our eyesight being better, we're going to head up on top of this hill. Um, oh, we're not seeing that far. Is it because... It, oh, it's dawn still. But there is some abandoned buildings here, and there is a chance that we might be able to find something. It is pretty close to here, but still scavenging. There are three office buildings that we can have a look at here, which we will. Now, the lockpicks that we've got, we haven't had a chance to use them yet, and that might be because we don't actually have the lockpicking skill. Oh no, yeah, the loot here is terrible. We'll be moving on, as expected, I suppose. And so from here, I think we'll just try and head kind of directly north if we can. And there we go. We're able to see a little bit better now. We've got a shack in those woods over there, which I'm going to start to try and beeline towards. As the shacks have been pretty good to us so far. And we've got another one over here as well. Hey, a storage shed too. Ah, uh, but yeah, the loot is still terrible here as well. It's just too close to the mega city, which that is understandable. Let's head up the hill here. And yeah, we're getting a lot more sight on these hills now. I think that's pretty much how we're just going to try and navigate. Yeah, it does make us a lot more visible to everything else that's around us. But at the same time, it allows us to see what's around. And you know what? Maybe that's far enough away. I suppose we will see, won't we? Moving along the hills, we've got another block of buildings up there yeah i just want to get an idea of the radius of how much has been scavenged storage shed will check you same deal so looking at our map here i think anything that's kind of in this region is going to be no good for us so we'll continue on making our way along the hexes and along the hills when we can and oh boy we are already parched let's get to drinking some of our water i did store some of it away for us there we go. We've still got two units of water left, which we'll make sure that we grab some more of before the day's out. I think the next time that I see a water source, I think we'll try and beeline towards that. And it is getting towards the evening, so we're going to need somewhere to stay. A forest will probably do okay. We're feeling hungry as well. You know what? We should be able to try and scavenge with a snare. And hello, stranger. We do have water up here. Let's head into the woods. And we'll just wait here for a turn and just keep an eye on them. Seems to be okay. All right, water time. That's all of our water full. Let's head in towards this little shack here. And we'll scavenge it first of all, the abandoned mobile home. Just as bad. But it is considered a forest, so we're going to go ahead and use it. And we'll start to boil up our water. Now that's all of our water sterilized. I don't think if we made a snare, we'd have a chance to actually get anything here. So I think we'll probably just continue pushing on further to the west. Just get as far away from the town as we can. We are going to start losing light uh, <laughs> pretty soon. So 
ruined buildings. Do we want to try and stay in any of these? Ideally, no. I mean, yeah, no, they don't, <laughs> they don't count for anything. And as we know, moving each turn takes a long time here. Okay, the forest will be a little bit better for us, I think. You know what? Let's make our squirrel snare and let's see if we can put it to use. Scavenging the forest, the loot, not great, but hey, that's certainly looking better. And if we were to use a light source here, it's gonna make it even better. Okay, that looked good. We have two squirrel corpses and I'm pretty sure some death cap mushrooms. So the corpses, let's get them processed. We're just gonna have to wait until we have a new turn. I think the first thing that we'll do though is we'll get a fire going and we'll just go for a small fire for now just because I think it's gonna be less easy to spot than the medium. And then let's grab our squirrel corpses here, our trapping skill and our meat cleaver. So that's actually gonna give us a small animal hide out of this and some small chunks of meat. We'll take it, we will take it. Oh, what's this? Unstop, unstoppable, legendary reputation for being unstoppable. Is that something new that we have? Let's have a look at our skills and attributes. Yeah, unstoppable. I wonder if it's because we shared the tape, the security footage of us. Legendary reputation. Well, maybe we can use that for intimidation purposes in the future. And as you can see, we only have our two floors here now. All right, let's see if we can do some cooking. And I suppose the thing is, yeah, the snare is still good. We could potentially continue to try and scavenge. And I'm not against it because I think spending the night not, not sleeping tonight will actually do us better. But first, we are going to need some food in us. So let's get a roasting. And I know it's not going to do too much for us, but hey, look at that. Still gives us some kind of fulfillment. Oh, we, you know, we can't scavenge anymore. Like that, that's it. It's like a one and done. Now I do wonder if we start hiding, if it does make us less noticeable when we're sleeping. I imagine probably not. Well, let's go make our noise trap and get ready to bed down for the night. Shelter is not great, but we're dressed really well, so I think we're gonna be fine. Okay, something approaches as we slumber. Hmm. Okay, so we have actually woke up. We have no idea what it was or who it was. Tracks, stranger. Okay, so some person was here. We are still hiding at the moment. We will unhide. But um, I want to try and see if there is anything that we can do with this hide. We'll just end our turn first. And now I do remember seeing patchwork hide gloves. Small pelt. So I imagine we have to process the hides to make them into a pelt. So for us to make those gloves, we actually only need one more pelt. So a little bit more trapping and we'll be there. The question is, how do we want to carry that for now? We would have to get rid of some of our bottles and just kind of shuffle stuff around a little. Honestly, the lockpicks, I think we should probably just sell them because we don't have that as a skill. So yeah, we'll have a look at doing that when we get a chance. For now though, we are good to continue on. Ideally, yeah, to another bit of forest. We're gonna unhide and we are gonna get scavenging in the stretch of woods. Oh, just as soon as we go back for that snare. Ah, but then that does require us to kind of carry it across and everything. It's probably going to be easier to just make a fresh one here. There we go. And we'll be using all of these things here to give us a really good quality of loot and brilliant. We got two out of that. So we're going to get a fire going and we are going to get them processed. That is one and that is two. And while we've still got the fire going, let's get roasting. And then... With the use of our knife here, which is nearly, nearly gone, we can make patchwork hide glove, glove, singular. Okay, so we are going to need to make two of these, I think. Let's have a look and see. Yeah, yeah, so that's just the one. But we do have another hide still, so all we need is just two more, which two more lots of squirrels will do it for us. And there's a forest just here. So I tell you what, we are gonna leave our spear here for a moment. We're gonna grab the snare and we're gonna wander on up here, scavenging and hopefully finding something good. No, great. While navigating, we, we slept on a rock, landing on the whetstone. While a painful setback, you're thankful it wasn't worse. Okay, so even though the loot chances were great, didn't go well, but we're not injured, thankfully. There is another forest close by, so I think we're just gonna try, okay. That was a dog man. Well then, we're gonna be trying the same thing here. 
And look at that, a squirrel. But unfortunately, just the one. Still, we are going to take that and we're going to head back to our little spot. That is rather frightening. But there is an incredibly noisy mower out there. A lawnmower. Not the giant prehistoric bird that existed in New Zealand. That'd be a little bit more concerning. But I think that puts us at the perfect place to wrap things up for today's episode. Philip's eyes have been fixed. And you know, he's made a fair bit of money as a water merchant. But now back out here in the wilds, danger is always close by. Legionnaires, I ask you, if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. As for now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned.